If enough people listen to you and share your feeling of the dangers of this superintelligence, is there anything that we could collectively do now to stop it? We should decide to pursue advanced narrow AI, superintelligent systems in specific domains, whatever is playing Go, solving protein folding problem, working on immortality. We don't need superintelligent systems as soon as possible. We can get almost all the benefits from those narrow, super capable systems. Then it's a hard distinction. It's not always easy to tell if it's narrow or general. A lot of technology is similar. But in terms of training data, if I'm training it to solve biology, medical problems, I don't need it to also drive a car, play chess, and do those other things. It's not a requirement. It's a lot safer. We know how to test it. We know how to control it. We understand what the edge cases are. We can use uh, other tools to verify outputs from that system. Whereas with super intelligent general systems, we have none of those tools. What's to stop us from implementing what you just suggested? You know, kind of a, um, a, a ban on super AI, but allowing narrow AI to proceed. So right now, it's a kind of prisoner's dilemma. All these heads of AI labs, maybe as a group, would be better off to just monetize existing technology, deploy it. I don't think GPT-4 has been integrated into the economy. There's trillions of dollars of uh, opportunity there. But individually, each one needs to get as close as possible to this AGI level of capability without crossing into the danger territory. Then they capture the whole market, they get most impact. Uh, so even if they never get to superintelligence, the economic necessity is that they try to get as close as possible without violating any personal safeguards. And that becomes dangerous. It is dangerous because you always want to outdo the other guys. So they have model 4, we'll do model 4.5, you'll do model 4.6. So at some point, somebody gets a little too close and that may be bad for all of us. It's just kind of game theory and we're going to do it to ourselves regardless because we're humans and we're selfish and we, we can't collectively act together. Uh, coordination is a huge problem, yes. If we could figure out how to cooperatively decide on what's best for all of us, uh, I, I think that would be part of the solution. Doctor, you're, you're a philosopher. You know, what, what do you think when people argue that this is just an evolution of intelligence and that humans were, um, you know, kind of a launch vehicle <laughs> to launch the super intelligence out to the universe and then after blast off, we're, we're no longer needed and discarded into the Gulf. <laughs> how do you feel about that? So this is kind of what uh, Hubert Agaris argues in his book as two different viewpoints. And if you are a cosmist, you're looking at it from outside of our planet. You are an alien intelligence looking at it. It makes perfect sense. There is nothing special about us if there are other civilizations out there. But I'm not out there. I'm here. I'm a human. And I have a very strong pro-human bias. Right. Me too. <laughs> I'm on Team Human. Uh, so yeah, I just have that bias and it just seems like there's something really important about um, preserving humanity. I guess it's selfish and speciest, but um, it's definitely how I feel. Um, what's going on in China? Is it, do you know, do you have a theory? Is it, again, uh, something to be concerned about? It's probably another part of that prisoner's dilemma that we can control even less than in the United States. Some people say, there they're, are obviously very intelligent people there. Some people say they're better at copying things than innovating things, but I don't know if that's a very general thing. Uh, what do you know about what's going on there and how it might affect us? So they've been catching up. Uh, like they used to be five, six years behind. I think now it's a lot less, maybe under a year. They're definitely excellent at improving technology. So even if initially they copy something, they will very quickly get it to perform better than what we have done in terms of mass adoption of technology in terms of deployment they have centralized planning to a large degree they can provide centralized resources for a project they wish they have less regulation in terms of in terms of data privacy uh, user data they have a lot of access to um human data on the scale of billion and a half people because they've been monitoring them for for a long time. So in many ways, they they have a bit of an edge over us. They are still behind right now in the cutting edge models, but uh, this could change very quickly. 
Yeah, also, if they are very good at copying existing technology, maybe better than the West, um, then yeah, they, if they, they can take some of these amazing innovations we're seeing coming out and the open source Llama models and some of these things, and then, like you said, apply 1.4 billion people's worth of data there uh, to where they could maybe leapfrog some of that development. So they have limitations still. I think they have less access to cutting edge processors, uh, computer chips, and uh, in general, cutting edge compute. So that could slow them down a little. But uh, overall, it's just another part of this prisoner's dilemma. It's not just five, six US companies. It's international. It's China, but it's also other countries. So we need everyone to agree. It's not enough to get just US to stop and then everyone else continues. It only makes sense if everyone's on board. And to realize that we have to understand it doesn't matter who makes uncontrolled superintelligence. The outcome is the same. Because it, it becomes its own entity, its own agent, and ends up doing whatever it wants. Exactly. Literally the genie's out of the bottle. And to have some type of illusion that you can control it is just the ultimate naivete of, of a human. I think so. I'm completely open to someone proving me wrong, but I haven't seen any real attempts. There is no one with a proposal, no one with a prototype, no one has a patent. There is uh, no specific details. We see Ilya, for example, start a new company, call it Safe Superintelligence, and that's wonderful. But tell us how you're getting there. What is the plan? There is zero technical details provided. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year's gonna be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. So let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days, but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. 
When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?